Okay, start in chapter 3. This is not going to be on the chapter 2 test, in case you're wondering. Uh, exponential functions. <clears throat> going to talk about just general definition, and then what we're going to spend most of our time on is graphing, which I know y'all don't like. But that's unfortunate, because graphing is very key in calculus. So, anyway, exponential functions. Any function in this form, uh, where A is a positive real number, these are some examples of exponential functions. Uh, it is a number to an x power, a number one half to an x power. A number e, and e actually is a number, e is approximately 2.718281828459045523, and it goes on and on and on. It's kind of like pi, it never stops. So that's what e is. Uh, you could also have kind of an ugly exponent, like right here you notice I have 3 to the power of 2x plus 4. But just know that an exponential function is a number to the x power. Um, it is not to be confused with something like x to a number power. That's called a power function. That is not an exponential function. When we talk about exponential functions, the base must be a number like 4 or 1 half or e or 3. It has to be a base to a variable power. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about graphing right now. So uh, first, we're just going to let a, a, a to the x be our basic exponential function. Um, now, all of these, these general, these general facts that I'm giving you are before transformations. And yes, we will still be doing transformations. We probably will be doing transformations for the rest of the year. Um, transformations. I'm running out of room. So this is before you transform the graphs. But they all pass through the ordered pairs 0, 1, and, and 1, whatever the base is. They all have a horizontal asymptote on the y-axis. So, I'm sorry, on the x-axis. So when we graph them, before we do any kind of shifting or stretching or something, we will always have a horizontal asymptote right there on the x-axis. Uh, and then, uh, geez, why can I get that right? I'm such a, such a loser. There we go. Uh, they have a horizontal asymptote, and they're always positive as well. Uh, your general shapes, if A is a positive number, so that would be something like Y equals 2, I'm sorry, positive. Uh, that is incorrect. This should say not A is greater than 0, but if A is greater than 1. So there's a little typo, let's fix that. If A is greater than 1, which would be something like Y equals 2 to the X, that will go through the ordered pair um, 1, 0. It's going to go through 1, 0. And then whatever the one, whatever the base is, they follow the asymptote right there, and then once you cross the y-axis, they take off. That is your general shape of an exponential function. If you hear something growing exponentially, the, rate, the reason we use that expression is because the exponential graph takes off incredibly fast. It just skyrockets. Um, and sometimes growing exponentially is to be taken literally. But anyway, if a is between 0 and 1, that would be something like y equals 1 half to the x, if your base is a fraction less than 1. Well then, it has the same shape, it's still going to go through 1, 0, but instead of taking off, it's going to come crashing down. It's going to start up high and come down like this. Those are the general shapes of your exponential functions. You have that horizontal asymptote, and they're always above the x-axis before you transform. So, let's give a few graphs a shot. How far have we gone? 3 minutes and 30 some seconds. Alright, um, graphing exponential functions. Let's start with this graph of 2 to the x. Um, now, I know I'm not going to need to worry. Well, I, I kind of have to be careful. Uh, I'll start right here. The graph of 2 to the x. What am I doing? There we go. I know I have a horizontal asymptote on the y-axis, so maybe I'll go ahead and graph my horizontal asymptote right there. That was supposed to be dotted. So we have our horizontal asymptote. And then I need to hit a couple of key points. If you remember, um, they go through 0, 1. And then I said they also go through 1 and whatever the base is. So in this case, that would be 1, 2, because the base is 2. Now, this is a really tricky thing that you could do if you forget. And for some reason, you all always forget that this is an option. You could just create an old-fashioned x, y table. If I plug in 0 for x, 2 to the 0 power is 1. So I should go through the ordered pair 0, 1. I'll plug in 1 for x. 2 to the first power is 2. So I should go through the ordered pair 1, 2. If I plug in 2 for x, 2 squared is 4. So I should go through the ordered pair 2, 4. If I plug in negative 1 for x, 
2 to the negative first. If you remember your rules about negative exponents, that's the same thing as 1 half. So I should go through negative 1, 1 half. And that's why it kind of levels off, is because if you have negative exponents, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. So I'm going to be like right here. And it levels off as we go to the left. And it's going to take off like that. That's our graph of e, e to the x, 2 to the x. Um, now here, I've started throwing in some transformations. And you have to be careful. This is the same parent graph. If we strip all the transformations away, we're still left with y equals 2 to the x. So this is going to be a transformation of 2 to the x. But I see two things. I see x minus 3, and that's part of the exponent. So I'm going to shift to the right three units. That minus 3 is up there with the x, so I'm going to go right three units. And the negative is not part of the x. It's not part of the exponents. Um, and you have to remember your order of operations. It's not negative 2 to the power. It's negative and then 2 to the power. The negative is not part of the exponent. And that means we are going to multiply our y coordinates by negative 1. Remember, if it's not inside with the x, you're going to change the, the y's. And this is like negative 1 times all that stuff. So we're going to multiply the y's by negative 1. And we like to do that with the table, or I like to do it with the table. So um, if I multiply my y coordinates by negative 1, I know my parent function of 2 to the x. My parent function, I'm going to create a little, I'm going to pause this while I start the table. There we go. Um, so I start a little table, and I start with just 2 to the x, because that's the parent function. And I list some ordered pairs, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, and 2. Um, and then we are going to multiply the y-coordinates by negative 1. So negative 1, 1 half becomes negative 1, negative 1 half. 0, 1 becomes 0, negative 1. 1, 2 becomes 1, negative 2. 2, 4 becomes 2, negative 4. And I'm going to take those points. I've already multiplied my y's by negative 1. Then I'll shift those to the right 3. Well, if you look at these points, when you multiply the y's by negative 1, everything gets flipped below the x-axis. And some of y'all may know your transformations that way. If you uh, multiply by negative, it flips everything below the x-axis. So now, I need to leave a lot of room below the x-axis. And I'm going to plot these points. Negative 1, negative 1 half. Negative 1, negative 1 half. Then I need to shift it to the right three units. I'm going to take this point and go to the right. One, two, three units. 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, to the right, 2, 3 units. 1, negative 2, to the right, 1, 2, 3 units. And 2, negative 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right, 1, 2, 3 units. And you can kind of see the general shape. See, it's kind of starting to drop off. And don't forget, we do have that horizontal asymptote on the y-axis. And that's not going to go anywhere because I shifted left and right. I didn't shift up or down. So if I move this horizontal asymptote to the right, it's still on the x-axis. And our graph is going to do this. It's going to follow, 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 hit my point, and then it starts to take off going down. So there's our graph of negative 2 to the x minus 3. Good, 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 bad, ugly, weird. Where are we? Eight minutes? Not too bad. Okay, let's try, hey, a blank page. I forgot to put that there. Triangle man, triangle man. Okay, 3 to the x over 2. Okay, let's identify the parent function. Um, remember, these are exponential functions. It's 3 to a variable power. Um, it's a number to a variable power. So I'm thinking my parent is just 3 to the x. And I'm going to start by listing some ordered pairs for 3 to the x. So let's think about that. What does 3 to the x go through? You know what? We could just plot some ordered pairs or plot some points. Let's see, if I plug in negative 1 for x, 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. If I plug in 0 for x, 3 to the 0 is 1. Crazy announcements. All right, I hope Ms. Carter got that message. Uh, if I plug in 1 for x, 3 to the 1 is 3. If I plug in 2 for x, 3 to the 2 is 9. Um, and right now, I, don't, I haven't listed any transformations, so we have to identify what transformations we have. I have x divided by 2, and it's in the parentheses with the x. So that means I'm actually going to multiply my x-coordinates 
by 2. So I'm going to take all of those ordered pairs I just had, and I'm going to double the x coordinates. My y coordinates are going to stay the same. So instead of negative 1, 1 third, it's negative 2, 1 third. We're going to double all the x's. 2 times 0. You know your 0 times tables? 1 times 2 is 2, 3. If I double 2, I get 4. My y coordinate is going to remain 9. Um, I have a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. Don't forget that. And let's give myself some room to graph this. There's no other shifting, nothing else going on. So I'm going to leave uh, a good bit of room up high because I, I want to try to hit that 4, 9 point. Move that over a little bit. Uh -huh. Oh, geez. There we go. Let's see x-axis, and that is a horizontal asymptote, so let's draw in the horizontal asymptote. And start plotting the points. Negative 2, 1 third. It's going to be about right here. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 9. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I plotted those points, and I can see my shape there. I'm going to hug my horizontal asymptote and start hitting my points. There's our graph of 3 to the x over 2. Good, 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 good. All right, moving on. How are we doing on time? 11 minutes. Okay, now this one, 3 to the x divided by 2. Ooh, this is a little bit different, although, uh, yeah, it's different. 3 to the x over 2. My parent is still, the exponential part is still 3 to the x, so I'm still starting with that 3 to the x. Uh, and this time, my divided by 2 is not inside the exponent. It's not with the x. So this whole thing is being divided by 2. That means I'm going to divide my y's by 2. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create that table for 3 to the x. There we go. So I created the table for 3 to the x. The same one. I'm just plugging in points. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. And we are now going to divide my y coordinates by 2. So that's what I have here. X coordinates are going to stay the same. So negative 1, 1 third divided by 2, 1 third divided by 2. Y'all remember your rules? 1 third divided by 2 is the same thing as 1 third times 1 half, which is 1 6. 1 divided by 2 is 1 divided by 2, 1 half. Then I have 1, 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. Then I have 2, and then I'll divide this by 2. 9 divided by 2 is 9 halves. Uh, and if you want to write those as decimals, um, 1 6, you probably don't know off the top of your head, I do, but we're going to pretend that I don't. Uh, 1 half is just 0. 0.5. And I'm only doing the decimals because it helps me graph. 3 halves is 1.5. And 2 is 4.5. And so there's my y's divided by 2, and that's my only transformation. There's no adding or subtracting, no shifting or anything like that. So let's get my axes drawn. And I'll draw my asymptote. That was fast. And now we start plotting the points. Negative 1, 1, 6 is just something crazy close to the x-axis. 0, 0.5, right in the middle. 1, 1 1.5. And 2, 4.5. Right? And there's my graph. I have room to do 3. What is 3 cubed? 27? 3 to the third power is 27. Never mind. I thought I was going to be able to fit that in. What is that going to be? 3, 27 divided by 2 is 13.5. Never mind. I'm not going to be able to fit that. That's pretty high up there. So I'm going to come on down and connect these points. Connect, connect, connect. And then we level off towards the horizontal asymptote. Do not cross the horizontal asymptote. And there's our graph of quantity 3 to the x all divided by 2. And then I have one more graph I wanted to do. Where are we? 14 minutes? All right, that's not too bad. One more. Hey, where's the graph? There it is. All right, one more graph. This one is probably the ugliest of the ones that I've chosen to do. Uh, it is 1 half to the x plus 3 minus 1. If you identify the parent function, the parent function is 1 half to the x. And I told you earlier that if your base is a fraction less than 1, instead of taking off, it's going to come crashing down like this. I'm going to do something that's a little bit tricky. I think it's a little bit easier, though, in the long run. I don't like having a fractional base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to remember this crazy rule that 2 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 half, 
right? Because 2 to a negative exponent is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 1, which is 1 half. I'm going to change my equation. Instead of saying 1 half to the x minus 3, I'm going to change it to 2 to the negative 1 to the x plus 3, all minus 1. And then if you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponent. So I'm going to change my function to 2 to the negative x plus 3. I'm not going to distribute the negative. I say negative 1 times x plus 3, all minus 1. Uh, and the reason I like seeing that is because what I've done by using that little rule that 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, I've turned my parent function instead of 1 half to the x. Now my parent function is 2 to some power. And 2 to some power is a lot easier for me to uh, figure out what I'm going to do. So let's generate the table for 2 to the x real quick. Okay, so there's my table. And I went one further. I went ahead and plugged in 3 also. 2 to the third power is 8. Uh, just, uh, just have that extra point. Then I need to identify my transformations. Now, I see three transformations. I see this negative 1 here, the x plus 3, and then a minus 1 there. So I have three transformations, and two of them I consider easy. The minus 1 on the outside is going to drop my function down 1. My plus 3 right here, if you add 3 to your x's, that's a shift to the left, 3. And then I have negative 1 times my exponent. Now, that negative 1 is in the exponent with x. So it says negative 1 times x. Remember, you do the opposite. So I'm actually going to divide my x by negative 1. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to do that in the table. I'm going to take my x's and divide them by negative 1. I'm going to leave my y's the same, which is simply just going to change the sign of all of your x's. So let, I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so I divided my x's by negative 1, and I also went ahead and drew my axes there. And then we need to start plotting and shifting. So I'm going to start with 1, 1 half. But then I need to shift left 3 and down 1. So I'm going to go left 2, 3, down 1. And then I have 0, 1, which is right here, left 2, 3. What did I do? I did something wrong there. I did, didn't I? Let's undo that. Whoops. Okay, if I shift this point, 1, 1 half left, 3, I'm right here, but down 1 is actually going to take me down to negative 1 half. I, don't, I didn't go down far enough. Okay, there we go. So then I have 0, 1. I need to go take that point left, 2, 3, down 1. And negative 1, 2, left, 2, 3, down 1. Negative 2, 4, left 2, 3, down 1. And negative 3, 8, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I need to go from here, left 2, 3, down 1. Um, and what's happened is I'm actually coming crashing down. And don't forget that when I shift it down, my horizontal asymptote is going to shift with it. So I'm going to have to shift my horizontal asymptote down 1. And we're still going to use that as a guide. And my graph, it comes crashing down. It's going to come down, come down, come down, come down. And hit that point. And then we're going to hug the horizontal asymptote. Don't cross it. Just hug it. Uh, and there we go. And that's why I said at the beginning, if, you're, uh, if your base is a fraction less than 1, you're going to come crashing down like this. Uh, and that's what ended up happening here. So uh, there we are. That was a little bit of a longer video, but it is what it is. See you in class.